Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. A few of you have suggested more rocket videos, and since it's getting about that time of the year again, here you go. I was recently asked why you need to know the centers of gravity and pressure. Well, that's a great question, and I'll do my best here to explain why that that's important. Let me discuss these two concepts really quickly and how they relate to objects. Yes, even rockets. The center of gravity is the average position of all the mass in an object. Now I've got a video or two on uh, how to calculate centers of gravity, so go check those out. An object behaves as if it's all of its mass is concentrated in one spot. If I throw this hammer through the air, it's going to spin, and it's going to spin around its center of gravity. I'm applying a force down here, and its CG is up here, so it rotated when I threw it. I've always wanted to throw a hammer through a giant window, but uh, they're expensive and I'm no vandal. But what if I don't want this hammer to tumble when I throw it? I could apply a force through the center of gravity, right? Let me give that a try and see if I can make that happen. I better go outside for these experiments. Knowing the CG is crucial for rocket science. Ideally, you'd design a rocket before you built it, right? You'd want to be able to make sure that it was stable and would fly straight before you made anything. Well, knowing the location of the CG is half the puzzle. Now let's talk about the other half, the center of pressure. The CP is the aerodynamic center of an object. This is where fins and things come into play. As something travels through a fluid, there are forces exerted on it. But where are those forces exerted? at the center of pressure. For something to be stable in flight, the CG must be ahead of the CP. Now why is that? Well, let's consider a few extreme examples. Here's a smooth ball. Its center of gravity is right in the center of the ball, isn't it? Anyone disagree? Well, fine. Get the heck out of here. Now, this ball's aerodynamic center, the CP, is also at the center of the ball, right? I mean, where else could it be? This is a homogeneous smooth ball, basically. However, a ball in flight doesn't necessarily behave like we'd want a rocket to behave, now does it? Since the CG and CP are in the same spot, the ball is free to rotate in any direction. Not exactly desirable for a rocket. Balls rotate in flight all the time, right? Pitchers, tennis players, golfers, they all use this ball's ability to rotate to their advantage. But since we're designing a rocket, we don't want it to tumble all the way to the target, do we? And it's a viable recovery strategy, but really we want the rocket pointing uh, where we want it to go, now don't we? What happens if the CG and CP are not in the same spot? Well, let's consider an arrow. It's like a rocket without a motor, right? But let's consider three cases with this arrow. We have a first a cylindrical stick. Its CG is obviously right here in the middle of the stick, isn't it? And of course, if we neglect anything on the tail end, its center of pressure is also there as well. Let's uh, get a stick and go outside and see how this thing flies. Well, it flies however it feels like at the moment, and that's not good. Uh, it's not really an arrow at all then, huh? So what's with the feathers or fletching or fins? Why do they make it fly straight? Center of pressure. With our stick example, the air was acting on it equally, so no matter how it was oriented in the airstream, it could fly at any angle like this, because the air here and the air here were applying the same force around the center of gravity here. So Newton's first law just kept making doing what it was doing. Now, the fletching here moved the CP over to here to CP2. Remember from my other video that the CP is the average of all the projected area? Well, these big fins back here move that average area this way. And now let's consider the second case with the arrow. We launch it at an angle like we did with the stick, and what's going to happen now? Anyone? Anyone? The arrow moves around its CG, but the air acts on the CP, so there's a torque created by the CP around the CG that will rotate the arrow in line with the airstream. How far? Well, until the CP is exactly behind the CG. 
If the arrow rotates too far, then the CP will rotate the arrow back the other way. In stable flight, the CP will always be exactly behind the CG. There's no other way. Well, unless smart computers are on board. Now, of course, when you're calculating your CGs and CPs, your CP, at least on the way up, is most likely not going to change for a single-stage rocket. Multi-stage rockets, of course, it's going to change, but on a single stage, it's probably not going to change if the rocket stays in one piece. Your CG, though, will change. So at launch, your CG should be ahead of your CP, or else it's, as soon as it comes off the launch rod, it's going to tumble like crazy. As your motor burns out, at burnout, your CG is going to move because now you don't have this you know, massive weight of fuel. Massive is a relative term. You don't have this giant chunk of fuel in the back of your rocket anymore. And so it's lighter in the back, and so your, effect, your CG is going to move forward. You're going to have even more stability now through the coast phase. You want to make sure that your rocket is stable at launch and all the way through the coast phase until your recovery device activates. If your recovery device fails to activate, this thing is going to go up, it's going to turn around with its excessive stability, and you're going to have a nice little lawn dart. So definitely make sure that all this math works out. Your CP is not going to move for a single stage rocket during the launch and coast phase, unless you're somehow shedding fins accidentally, but then you've got whole other sorts of other problems. Do the math and make sure that these are where they are on this little diagram. If you get some sort of different answers, then go back and check because you probably did something wrong. In stable flight, the CP will always exactly trail the CG. This is part of the reason that tricycle gear airplanes outnumber tailwheel airplanes. They're simply easier to land. In a tricycle gear airplane, the CG is always ahead of the main wheels, and so it's easy to maintain directional control on the runway. In a tailwheel airplane, the CG is behind the main wheels. It has to be, right? Otherwise it wouldn't sit on its tail. But this makes it much more difficult to land because the plane wants to go backwards as soon as it lands, and that demands a lot more skill on the rudder on the part of the pilot. So we design our craft so that the CG is ahead of the CP so it's inherently stable and we things go where, they point, where we point them. Try pushing a shopping cart in reverse. It's the same thing. When you're designing your land, water, and aircraft, calculate your CGs and CPs before you build anything. You'll need to know the weights and dimensions of each object, but by doing this first, you can be sure that your rockets will fly straight every single time. And so now you're designing your rocket, you've got everything where you think it's going to go, you've calculated the CG, you've calculated the CP, like in the other videos I showed you. But what do those numbers mean? Obviously, the CG number needs to be closer to the nose than the CP, but by how much? You don't want an excessively stable rocket. So typically, one to three body tube widths is a good separation between CG and CP. If your CP is less than one body tube width from your CG, then you need to either add some nose weight to move the CG farther forward, or you can move the fins farther back or make them larger. Uh, but just remember, everything's going to move when you change one thing. But adding weight's never a really good idea because you're always trying to minimize the dead weight of the thing. So now you just have to figure out uh, how to get this all back down safely. But that's a whole other topic. The key in recovery, though, is to make sure that your rocket is unstable on its way back down. Streamers and parachutes are great for this. You certainly uh, don't want a lawn dart. Anyone remember those? Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this all helps you out understand CG and CP and why it's important and what you can do about it to make it work in your favor. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.